When you first log into Windows 11, you will see a number of simple messages to keep you distracted, and then Microsoft will ask you several questions. The first question is about using location services. To that, I would recommend selecting Yes, and then clicking on Accept. Now, most of the rest of them, I recommend the bottom or no selection because they would, like for example, this would require a Microsoft account, but we are logged into a local account. So you choose the bottom selection, just for privacy, etc., and click accept. The general theme being the less information that's flowing back and forth between your computer and the Microsoft servers, the better. So now we're on the Windows 11 desktop. Now the first thing that pops up is a view of what you would get if you had clicked on your start button. So if I click off of that, click back on the start button, you see that it's the same window. So they have pinned a variety of uh, the default apps that you're going to generally see in a Windows 11 installation, right? And then also they have their recommended area here where you will find as you start working, files that you've used, uh, programs that you've installed, etc. Shortcuts to those will appear here so that you can quickly get back to them or explore them if they're new. Right? If you need to turn off your computer or log out, the power button is on the bottom right. So if you click there, you get all of your options uh, and you know going through them in order, you can lock your computer, which will just put it to the login screen, right? And then you'd have to sign in again. If you had a password, you'd have to put in your password, right? You can put your computer to sleep, keep it in a low power mode. And if you wiggle your mouse or click your space bar, etc., it'll wake up from sleep and continue on where it left off. We've got your typical shutdown here. And because there are updates available at the moment, we can either update and shut down or update and restart. And then of course, there's just your general restart as the final choice, which is something that I do recommend you do periodically, uh, at least once every couple of days. Some people like to leave their computers on basically forever, right? But uh, that's not great for memory management and optimization, etc. Programs grab resources and memory. They don't always release them properly. So your computer can slow down and become very unstable if you leave it on, say, for two weeks or a month, etc. So every couple of days, every week at least, restart your computer. So aside from your start button here, we have your general desktop area on which you have your desktop icons, right? We've got a couple of browsers here. You've got your recycle bin which is where deleted files will go and stay until you empty the recycle bin, which you can do by right clicking and choosing empty recycle bin. Nothing in there at the moment, so it's grayed out. Grayed out options are inactive, that's standard throughout the Windows interface. At the bottom of the screen, you have a search area where you can search for files on your system or programs that are installed. For example, if I search for Notepad, the icon for Notepad will come up. I can click on that and then, you know, I can write a text file. Right, we'll close that off. And in the lower left corner, we have the widgets area. And that shows a variety of, well, let's call them weather and advertisements, uh, bits of news, etc. If you don't like those kinds of things uh, popping up or being active, you can right click on your taskbar, which is the bottom bar here. Click on taskbar settings. We'll maximize that by clicking the center icon in the top right. And here we can turn off widgets. You'll see if I turn off here, the widgets option, then that disappears here. If you're used to 
your start button being in the bottom left corner as with earlier versions of Windows. You can scroll down, click on taskbar behavior, and instead of center, choose left, and your start button will return to where you're used to seeing it. One of the issues with the widgets being in that position is that muscle memory will keep bringing you to click on the, the widgets and you're going to expect your start area but you get the widgets instead which can be quite frustrating. You can also adjust how the search is displayed. So right now they have the search box which takes up quite a bit of real estate. You can click the little drop down arrow and say search icon only and then you'll have the little magnifying glass icon that will give you the same search functionality but take up much less room. Another bit that I like to tweak is the combined taskbar buttons and hide labels. So what that means is that if you have, for example, you're running Windows Explorer here and then if you right click and run another copy if you can see it, it's very subtle, but you, it shows a layered effect to show that there's a few of them open, right? But if we go to switch this from always to never, we'll see clearly both explorers are open, and we can even see which area they're open to, right? So here it says that we're open to pictures, and here it says that we're open to the home. So I find that is a much nicer way of managing what's open and seeing what's open. In the bottom right hand section of your desktop, along the right bottom right edge of your taskbar, you may find that there's a little arrow pointing up. If you click on that, you'll see other icons that have been hidden to save room on the taskbar. So if you do see that arrow, there's more going on than you can immediately see. You can click there and find out what else is running. And if you hover over the icons, generally you will get a little description about what they are and sometimes their status. We can close that window and these two here. Now, an icon of note that you'll have on your taskbar by default is the Microsoft Store. If you click on that, you will be able to browse through you know, different apps, games, entertainment, etc. And these are all programs that have been made available through the Microsoft Store that you can install often for free on your computer, but some of them will, will require payment. For example, if you wanted to install iTunes, you could do a search for iTunes, and then you'll see the iTunes offer. Click on Get, and the download of iTunes will start. The software be, will be installed, and once that's done, it will be available under your Start button. You can go and open it as soon as you see Installed as the status in the Microsoft Store. So we close that, and we click on the Start button. You'll see, as I mentioned earlier, that new programs are added under the recommended area. They won't necessarily stay there. They can be bumped down by other items. So if you'd like that to be pinned, you can right click and say pin to start. And then now we have iTunes here. Now if you right click on your start button, there are a variety of options that you can click on. You can look at installed apps, your power options, event viewer, system, etc. A key area is settings right here. So let's click on settings. 
And here, for example, you can click on Windows Update at the bottom left. And we can see that at the moment, some updates are almost fully installed, but the system needs to restart. So I could click Restart Now. Right? There's also some advanced options for updates. So we have receive updates for other Microsoft products that's turned on. It's usually off by default. I recommend turning it on, right? Also usually off by default is notify me when a restart is required to finish updating. I like to turn that on as well. You can also set your active hours. Right now they're set from 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. on this system but you can click on the little down arrow and manually set those to whatever times you like. And between those times that you set, uh, the computer will not restart due to uh, a pending update, but outside of those hours, it will do so. If we go back to the main update page, you can also pause updates for up to five weeks. Right? If you find that the system is updating too frequently and it's starting to annoy you. Now accounts is another area that you may want to go into. You can change your sign in options such as passwords and pin codes etc. And if you need to create a new user you can click on other users and click on add account. Now I recommend creating local users, so I, you would click, I don't have this person sign in information, right? Add a user without a Microsoft account. So now we're creating a local account. And so we'll just call this new account. I won't put a password at the moment. If you do put in a password, it will ask you several security questions, etc., for password recovery. We're gonna click next and you'll see the new account is listed. Click the little down arrow there and change the account type from standard to administrator if you want that account to be able to add new programs and manage the computer. All right? And then once you log out, so if we click on start, click on your account name here, you got these three little dots in the upper corner and we click on sign out. We'll see shortly that the new account is available in the bottom left hand corner. So if I click on the screen, there's the new account. I could click sign in to jump in there. But for now, we'll go back to signing into our current account. One reason for having separate accounts is so that your documents and pictures and preferences, etc., are separated and they aren't mixed up within your family or, or business, etc. If you need to adjust the time or your time zone, you can right click on the time and date in the bottom right and click adjust date and time. Right? Make sure that your correct time zone is in effect. Do that first before you change the time because changing your time zone may correct the time already for you. Right? You can have set time automatically or if you turn that off, you can set it directly. Once you have your correct time zone selected, you can also click Sync Now and it will grab the current time for that time zone from public clocks and you won't have to worry about setting it manually at all. Now there may be software on your system that you don't need or you don't want. For example, if we hover here, we see that OneDrive is installed and running on this machine, but I don't use OneDrive myself. So if you right click on your start button and go to settings and then go to apps and click on installed apps, right? We can search for OneDrive 
and the three little dots on the right, we can choose uninstall, then confirm that you would like to uninstall it, and then we'll see that shortly this icon here will disappear and we've got to confirm that we want it to continue. But now the icons disappeared and that app is no longer running every time the computer starts and taking up memory, resources and space unnecessarily. All right, so you can browse through the selection of apps and anything that you recognize that you know that you don't want, uh, go ahead and remove it. If you're not sure what it is, I recommend leaving it alone. Uh, because it may be required uh, by something else that you use. So let's go ahead and get those updates installed. And you've had a introduction to the beginning of Windows 11. So to give you an idea of the kind of changes that can happen when you do run an update through, now the desktop has changed. We have, it, it's like an active desktop. It's gonna change periodically. Microsoft chooses different pictures. You now have a learn about this picture icon in the top right corner. And if we look at clicking on our account, we used to have to click on these three little dots to sign out but now they have a sign out button front and center. So changes large and small come through this way. It's an ever moving target.